Good afternoon, you wee bastards, and welcome back to another What Not A Dev Vlog video with Koala. By popular demand, yes, I'm keeping Dev Vlog videos with me in them. Now, I know the dev server is up. Well, I think it's actually closed by the time I'm recording this. The M1 IP was on it, as well as stuff like the British Warrior IFV. Finally, Britain is getting something remotely good at high tier. But today, we're going to talk about the Soviet new high tier support vehicle, the BMP-2. So there's not too much to go over with this vehicle, its history is pretty simple, I mean it's a direct successor to the BMP-1 which we already know, a troop carrier turned quasi tank developed in 1980 to replace the BMP-1 which was considered outdated by that time. Instead of the 73mm tank destroying cannon, we have a comparatively low penetrating yet rapid firing 30mm auto cannon and the capability of launching the 9M113 Conkers or 9M111 <coughs> Faggot ATGMs. Jesus. YouTube, please don't demonetize. <laughs> this makes the IFV equivalent in most terms to the Begleit Panzer, Warrior, and M3 Bradley. God, you know, where the hell is that thing? I mean, America is now the only main nation not to have a top tier IFV as a support vehicle. However, as of the first day of server, yes, I get to use information learned from that now, this tank was placed at 7.7, .7, directly between the BMP1 and Object 906. Now, I actually don't like that battle rating placement for a couple of reasons, and we're going to go over them. See, tanks at higher tiers have more effective armour protection in general, but also weaker weak spots. Essentially, they're more specialised rather than the tanks at tier 5 and early in tier 6 that focus more on all-round performance. This means that while the BMP-2 will be capable, easily, of using its ATGMs to deal with the main battle tanks it'll see, that still puts it up against a substantial amount of vehicles that rely on thick arm protection that is reliable. To clarify, I'm talking about the Mouse, the M103, T32, King Tiger 105, etc. The BMP2 can of course use its ATGMs against these vehicles, but its gun will effectively be a paperweight at that tier, only existing to eliminate SPAA and potentially aircraft as well. To actually use it for side shots, you have to be up tiered, and up tiered quite severely, to 8.7 say, where armour protection really ceases to matter, and this thing can function as a proper support tank. This vehicle would honestly be better off fighting MBT-70s at 9.3 than our current 7.0 to 8.0 vehicles, and that's exactly how I would suggest you use it. Exactly like a Big Light Panzer, a supporting tank, light, nimble scout, an ATGM carrier with a little more versatility using that cannon. Put it with your 8.3s, 8.7s, hell even 9.0s if you want to use it in its intended role, although we all know where the realism in War Thunder argument is going to get us. This vehicle shouldn't be used as a frontline tank, and if anybody from Gaijin happens to be watching this, don't try to balance it as if it is. It'll thrive in an up tier where it is, and it will certainly be capable in a down tier, I'm not saying that it won't, it probably won't be anything special at the battle rating it's currently at. We all know the 6.7 to 7.7 .7 black hole, so I would expect down tiers relatively often if it stays where it is, which we'll get to in a moment. I would legitimately suggest using this with your T62 and T10M, if not the T64A and T62M1, where it'll be more of a deviation from the standard doctrine of vehicles, and its main calibre gun will function just as well as its ATGM system in a side shot. This vehicle does raise some odd questions. How do you balance support vehicles? I mean, the ASU-85, for example, a post-war vehicle, could function quite well at a battle rating of 8.0 in all honesty. It's designed to be a light, nimble thing taking advantage of weak spots in the armour of main battle tanks. The M56 Scorpion is something I see a lot of people taking out with their 7.7 .7 lineup rather than 6.7, occasionally seeing 8.7 up tiers and opting for the light, nimble scout. The RU251, people have long since said that it's better up tiered to as high as 8.3, and when it comes down to it, there are a ton of low tier vehicles that could function very well at high tier, the M18 Hellcat for example, I have a blast taking that thing out into 9.0 battles. These tanks however would perform abysmally in the middle tiers, 6.3 to 8.0, and while I'm not obviously saying that you should up tier your M18 Hellcat to 9.0 often at all, or that it should have its BR raised, even though it probably should be put up to 5.7, but it does raise the case of these very modern support vehicles, the Warrior, the BMP-2, the Bradley when it eventually comes, and I'm sure it will. These were used in very recent conflicts and are still in service to this day. These could be balanced down in the tiers, sure, where their guns would allow them to function as proper tanks. 
but they could also see more effective use at top tier as support vehicles rather than in the middle where they don't really function at all. These vehicles deserve to be treated differently rather than just another tank in your lineup. You use them with a vastly different mindset and playstyle and add to that the realism factor and I think the BMP2 should be raised up to let's say 8.7. Now obviously the dev server is whack for battle ratings, I mean especially the first generation. In this one the F8F Bearcat had a lower battle rating than the F6F and neither of those two aircraft have been touched for months if not years. So certainly don't take the BMP2's battle rating as final, this video wasn't meant to be a correction, more of a suggestion to guide you and an interesting discussion about support vehicles which I want you guys to discuss further in the comments. Definitely don't take this as an aggressive rant or anything, I am very excited for the BMP2's release. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video, I hope you lads enjoyed, please leave a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already and come follow me at all the links in the description below. Always remember, keep your bagpipes to hand, your kilt on, and as always, I shall see you lads next video.